With total acid hydrolysis, you add very strong concentrated acid and let that stand at high temperature for a long time, which means that you're going to hydrolyze everything that can possibly be hydrolyzed. The last time that we met, we already went over the mechanism for acid hydrolysis. So since we're running out of time, rather than going through the mechanism, let's just see if we can draw the products. Let's see if we can draw what the product would be here if we hydrolyzed. Now, what is going to be hydrolyzed? All the amide bonds. Total acid hydrolysis we saw last time hydrolyzes amide bonds. So they just break into separate amino acids? That's right. That is the purpose of total acid hydrolysis. The purpose is to break a connected peptide into separated amino acids. Finished or thing? Finished. What did you mean by four? Oh, I was counting the carbons to make sure. Ah, okay, good. Total acid hydrolysis attacks the amide bonds. Mm -hmm. A good first step then is to squiggle all the amide bonds. Mm -hmm. So we can squiggle this bond. We can squiggle this bond. Mm -hmm. Now there was an amide bond that you missed. What's the other amide that I haven't squiggled? Go ahead and point to it. Also check the side chains. Oh. Everyone misses that the first time. I was kind of mean not to point that out, but don't we really need to squiggle here too? Okay. So the acid hydrolysis doesn't know whether something's on the main chain or the side chain. It's going to hydrolyze all the amide bonds, whether they're main chain amide bonds or side chain amide bonds. It turns out that there's a couple of amino acids that have amides on their side chains. This is asparagine, by the way, and it has an amide on its side chain. So that also will get hydrolyzed. Close. What would be floating around? That's better. Now, when we hydrolyze an amide, what new functional groups do we get? Amines. And? Carboxylic acids. That's right. And you did very well at turning all these amides into carboxylic acids and amines, even though we didn't go through the mechanism. We went through that last time. Mm -hmm. So to save time, I'm not going to redraw this. I'm just going to erase this bond turn this into a carboxylic acid. And I think you correctly saw that we would expect that the nitrogen would gain a proton as part of the hydrolysis. And then we can do the same thing over here. All I'm doing so far is just copying what you did correctly already. So this is all stuff that you've already done correctly. And then here, when we hydrolyze this, Again, we would expect this nitrogen to gain a proton as part of the hydrolysis. Mm -hmm. So far, I think this is exactly what you have on your page, right? Yep. Good. You got all that, right? Total acid hydrolysis hydrolyzes all of the amide bonds into carboxylic acids and amines. Technically, this is not an amine. Technically, this is just ammonia. But obviously, it's very related to an amine. It's a nitrogen with no carbons on it. So it's important to include this as one of your products. Now, what type of functional group is this? Carboxylic acid. Right. Are, are these, do these have acid-base functions? Uh, they do. Right? And then with hydrochloric acid, everything should be protonated. Right. So we should have NH3 pluses. Over here? That's right. So this was already cool. 
this was right, but since we're in very acidic conditions, the amines should all be protonated. By the way, notice that this nitrogen was not produced by the hydrolysis. This was an amine we had all along. But even, it doesn't matter whether the amine came from the hydrolysis or was already pre-existing in the starting materials, all the amines have to be protonated under acidic conditions. So we have to add yet another proton to this nitrogen. It would naturally gain a proton in the course of the hydrolysis to become NH3, but then it's going to be protonated again to form ammonia. The protonated form of a free nitrogen is NH4+. So this is the correct form over here. We've seen a lot of examples of how easy it is to forget this idea. Both amines and carboxylic acids have two different forms. So anytime your final product has either an amine or a carboxylic acid, we must ask ourselves, should, which form should we, we be drawing, the protonated or the non-protonated? That just takes practice. Hopefully you'll have enough time to do enough extra problems today to see some more examples of where that comes up on the test. So, I forgot this should be protonated to be NH3, and this should be protonated to be NH3. Now that matches what you have in your work. Mm -hmm. So basically, we didn't really have to do much to the carboxylic acids because they were already in their protonated forms. Right. But we had to find all the amines and protonate them. Mm -hmm. And we've still missed an amine. That's a side chain. Right? That's right. Remember, this was not produced by the hydrolysis, but it's still an amine, so it still needs to be protonated. It's tempting when you're doing acid hydrolysis to only focus on the changes that happen at the bonds that you're hydrolyzing. But besides hydrolyzing the amides, we also have to protonate all the amine groups. Well, here was an amine group that we had all along. This, by the way, is lysine. Lysine has an amine side chain. So anytime you're under acidic conditions, the lysine side chain is going to get protonated. Notice that we need two different terms here then. This is what I would call the main chain nitrogen. And this is what I would call the side chain nitrogen. But in this case, they should both be protonated. This is what I would call the main chain carboxycarbon. And this is what I would call a side chain carboxycarbon. It's good to distinguish between the main chain and the side chain. But still, they should both be protonated too. Well, now we finally have the correct pictures over here. So everyone misses these the first few times because they forget to look to always to protonate people, or they don't miss everything that has to be protonated. So we have to check not just the bonds that we've been hydrolyzing, but also the side chains. So, so, so to summarize, when you do total acid hydrolysis, first, squiggle all the amide bonds. Don't just squiggle the amide bonds that are part of the main chain. Also watch out for amide bonds that are part of the side chains. That happens for asparagine and glutamine. They have amide side chains. So we squiggle all the amide bonds, both on the main chain and on the side chains, if we know we're going to do a total acid hydrolysis. Then we hydrolyze all of those. What, what happens to an amide? The amides turn into separate carboxylic acids and amines. Or they turn into a carboxylic acid and ammonia. And then because this is under acidic conditions, then we have to search out all of the amines and protonate them. Both the amines that were produced in the total acid hydrolysis and also the amines that were already existing before the hydrolysis. All the amines have to be protonated. We don't need to worry about protonating the carboxylic acids because they would already have been drawn protonated naturally. But we have to find the amines and protonate those. OK. And one last thing. How would you know when it's a total acid hydrolysis problem? Well, they might say the words total acid hydrolysis, or they might write THH, which stands for total acid hydrolysis. Or they might write this, except that the way that they would write this is for some reason it's conventional not to include the water. For some reason, people don't usually include the water here. I guess it's understood that it's the solvent. 
So don't get confused. Usually when they're showing the conditions for total acid hydrolysis, they just show the strong acid, heat, high concentration, and the time, and they don't specifically say the water. It's just conventional, I suppose, to assume that we do have the water, because after all, this is a hydrolysis. So when you see this, you know they're doing this total acid hydrolysis, and again, it's breaking apart all the different amino acids. These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There is a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm or you can just use the link in the info box. By the way, I also offer tutoring via Skype and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service at my website. Thanks.